welcome to Dicebreakers. Today we're going to be taking a look at Spyfall. Spyfall is a game of bluffing, deduction, and intrigue. All of the players find themselves in a location. Every player knows where they are and who they are, except for one clueless player who has been randomly determined to be the spy. The spy's mission, should they choose to accept it, is simple, to figure out where they are. Players will take turns asking each other questions. A good spy will be able to remain undetected and glean the information they need to deduce where they are. A bad spy will attract suspicion and be caught. Let's learn Spyfall. The game comes with 240 cards, 30 location decks containing 8 cards each. The publishers of the game were kind enough to supply 30 plastic bags to keep the decks organized individually. You're going to need a stopwatch to play this game as all rounds are subject to a time limit. The rules suggest 8 minutes per round, but you can customize this as you see fit once you've gotten used to how the game plays. We like 5 minutes. All players should have access to the list of possible locations in the 30 location decks. The rulebook includes a copy of the list, but we really recommend printing out individual player aids so that everybody can have a copy. We've linked to one we like in the description. Having the list of locations in front of every player helps the spy look casual, and it helps the other players think like the spy. So how do you win Spyfall? Well, there's two ways that the spy can win by determining the location during gameplay, or by surviving to the end of the round undetected and avoid being voted on as the spy in a final vote. There are two ways the non-spy team can win, by determining who the spy is during gameplay, or by successfully voting on who the spy is in that final vote we just mentioned. The idea here is for the spy to guess what location everyone's at. If the spy can't do that, then the spy needs to fly under the radar and not get caught during play or at the end of the round during voting. For the other players, the goal is to determine who the spy is without giving the spy too much information about where you are, but to give the other players just enough information about where you are to convince them that you're not the spy. So how does the game play? Well, to set it up, you'll randomly choose a deck of location cards. You're going to deal out as many cards as there are players, making sure that one of the cards included is the spy, but also making sure not to look at the location beforehand when you're creating the deck. Now once you've created the deck, shuffle it up and deal one card to each player. At this point, you've either received a spy card or you have received a location card. If you've received the spy card, you are the spy, and you know nothing about where you are. If you've received a location card, it'll indicate a location, in this case a university. It'll also indicate a status or a role, in this case campus security. We encourage you to play in character and try to answer questions and ask questions just like your status suggests. So if you were handed the campus security card, think and act like campus security. But if you don't want to roleplay, you don't have to. Play begins with the dealer asking any other player at the table a question related to the location. Note that once you're asked a question, you must answer it. Once you answer the question, you then get to ask another player at the table a question. Play proceeds in this manner. After you've been asked a question, you ask someone a question, and that person then gets to ask another person a question. This goes around and around until one of the following happens. The spy could figure out the location, stop play, and yell it out. If they're wrong, they lose. If they're right, they win. Someone decides to accuse another player of being the spy. If this happens, you can stop the timer, but the group can only do this once per round. Now, Whoever stopped the timer must get all of the other players to agree to vote on the spy that they think they've found. If all the other players at the table, except for the person being voted on, agree to the vote, then you proceed immediately to the voting round. You also get to the voting round if time runs out. So you're in the voting round because someone called a vote or because the timer ran out. Now the players at the table must discuss and try to determine who the spy is. At this point, it's too late for the spy to stop play and guess their location. 
they have to rely on remaining hidden and getting the group to accuse someone else of being the spy. A vote occurs when all players simultaneously point at someone else at the table. Whoever has been pointed to the most is accused of being the spy. If they were actually the spy, the non-spy team wins because they've found the spy. If they were not the spy, the spy got away and the spy wins. Now, the Spyfall rulebook breaks down gameplay with a point system to determine who's the winner after a series of rounds. At Dicebreakers, we prefer to play a simplified version where each round is its own game, and either the spy wins or the other players win. We don't keep track of points, and we like it that way, but if you want to keep score, keep score. If you want to see us play through a round or two of Spyfall, feel free to click here or check the description below for a link to our Let's Play Spyfall video.